Mm, hello, hello! What is up? We have our first chatter. Is it pronounced Sloth Boy? I saw you gave me a follow too. Thank you for that. Before the, uh, before I started, I was messing around with slobs and I saw you in there. Yeah, the music in this game is fantastic. Yeah, the, the oh my uh, stream imminent screen. Yeah, that's straight from the game. Um. Please let me know if things sound badly, or if they if you can't hear enough of the game, or if you can't hear enough of me. Uh, I'm gonna be headless again today so that I can show off the twin stick in action. Um, I know it's not really the greatest angle. It's kind of hard. Maybe the, this might actually be the best possible angle to show the twin stick because you can see the triggers. And you can see my thumbs going when I hit the buttons on top. For those who don't know, oh, like plow. <laughs> Slough boy. Gotcha. So this is a twin stick. It's got two sticks, which each have, I guess, eight directions because the diagonals. Um, and then you've got a button on top of each one and a trigger on the front. And then you've got the start button in the corner. Um, I just thought, the more I thought about it, the more it seemed like this was perf It was too perfect, uh, this game, for the twin stick. And it doesn't support it. It didn't support it originally. Um, but the twin stick is essentially, it reads as a gamepad with weird button layout. So you can plug it into any Saturn game and control the game that way, but it'll be like, you know, hold this trigger to go forward, press this button to go left. You know, it'll be all over the place. Um, so we needed someone to, who could basically hijack one of the existing controller layouts in the game uh, and change where the buttons were mapped so that it would be ideal for a twin stick setup. Um, and Knight of Dragon, who has been sort of our technical guru for this entire project, um, rose to the occasion, uh, did the thing, discovered that there was actually an unused control layout hidden in the game, uh, so we didn't even need to ruin one of the existing... What fro Wait, what froze? I don't see that anything froze on my end. Sound and video cuts out. Is it back now? It looks fine on my... I'm watching... I have the stream going on my phone. The only thing is... So I'm using a... I have this cheap upscaler that I use to capture uh, my older consoles. And it the, the power jack for a USB cord is very sensitive. So if you, like, tap it at all, it turns off. So you have to get it just how you want it and then leave it alone. You're saying it's... Hold on. The video looks good on my end. Yeah, it looks like it's all good now. Well, I hope that doesn't happen again if it happened. <laughs> okay. Um, fantastic job. Well, thank you. Uh, it's been uh, kind of surprising how smoothly this has gone. <laughs> you know, there have been hang, uh, hang ups here and there, but like, uh, when all is said and done, we're. All, we're very close to the end of the project, and uh, we, you know, the earliest work was done at the end of February, uh, and that was just me like making a spreadsheet and translating stuff. Um, and there have been some periods where we just couldn't move forward because we were waiting on this thing or that. So uh, I feel like um, this could have been done even sooner if there had been like a couple, f like one or two less hang-ups so like um 
I don't know. I just feel like th th now that we know, I feel like it, it's very motivating to do future projects, you know, because it doesn't actually take that long. Um, so today we're going to look at Cologne Steiner, who's the, uh, um, the, the navigator who in the original version of the game spoke lots of uh, dodgy English. And uh, this was a particularly unique challenge in that we had to figure out how to, um, like, how does that translate? And, uh, you know, our first idea was to just not translate it at all. What's up, guy with the bow tie? Good to see you here. I appreciate you tweeting this out, too. Um, so we were like, uh, so my first idea was maybe we just don't change her at all and let, like, leave the Japanese VO in for that since half of it is English anyway and it's kind of funny to listen to. Um, but there were too many important terms that were in Japanese still and I thought it would um, affect the play experience. Um, it also kind of, it's a weird thing where it's like, um, does it does it mean the same thing? Like, I think to an overseas audience, hearing a Japanese actress do sort of dodgy English lines, it sounds like, oh, this character's the Japanese one. But the original audience for the game was like, oh, this is the this is the foreigner character. There, there's always uh, like the non -de non denominational Western foreigner. It's a trope. Uh, not the most sensitive trope either, so we had to figure out what to do. Um, and it turned out, so one of the guys on our team is in Germany, he's German, and uh, he had a co-worker who was interested in helping out with the project, who also spoke German, and uh, and we were like, well, Cologne, it's Cologne Steiner, so maybe we, there's an angle there. Um, and so we ended up going that route where she sp basically she speaks English with smatterings of German for flavor. <laughs> and then there's a few other, there's a couple other instances where she drops uh, some other languages just to sort of try and hold on to that feeling that she, like you don't really know what her deal is. She's just like nebulously international. She has some kind of, uh, like she's well-traveled and you, and Cologne is a woman of mystery. It says so in the manual. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at the control layouts. We've got A, B, and C all still intact, so you can play them the way you used to on the pad. Um, and then we've added type D, complete with a bespoke twin-stick graphic made by Danthrax. Look how gorgeous this is. He used the, exist the, the color palette that we see in these other graphics and made this really detailed image of the twin stick. For comparison, here's what an actual twin stick looks like again. Oh yeah. So, uh, and we're calling that type D. And uh, you can see uh, you've got, so you've got robot mode and plane mode. Um, it's kind of hard to point to the trigger because you can't see it from an overhead, but it's he, he drew these dotted lines showing where the triggers are. Uh, so you morph with the left trigger, and then you move forward uh, and back and strafe left and right with the left stick, and then you rotate with the right stick. So this puts it basically on par with like the dual analog stick setup of most modern 3D games. It's so cool that you were able to get twin stick support in the, yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> someone put the idea in my head, and then I was like, well, how could we not do that, it's just, it's just, it's too, it's too good, uh, and now, now that the twin stick is working flawlessly, I, like, I, I think this is probably the best twin stick experience on the Saturn, <laughs> Uh, so then, uh, then you jump with the right button and you attack with the right trigger. Uh, we deliberated for a while and kind of debated which trigger the attack should be on. If you, it was on the left trigger, which means you're, you're moving and strafing and firing all with the left stick. Uh, and, uh, but then I, I really wanted it to be on the right trigger, uh, just to, again, put it on par with modern games. If you think about a modern game with shooting, you move and strafe with the left stick, rotate and fire, or rotate with the right stick and fire with the right trigger usually. 
hey Danthrax. Um, and Danthrax has put so much hard work into the game, uh, and just keeps astounding us with like new features he's just throwing in. So uh, I'll call him out as I see him. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do it on easy just so we can show. You. Okay, so real quick, uh, the, the when you beat the game with a navigator, you unlock uh, their voice samples in this menu. That's Lyra Hart we're hearing. Just showcase some random Looks ones. Like I was doing this with my, my wife uh, hey, this morning and just like cracking ourselves up listening to all these random clips. It's so good. Video game pizza, hello there. You have to forgive me. I'm, I'm looking at the chat via my tiny phone screen. Maybe I can pull that up on my browser. One sec. There we go. Um, it's been catch up on the chat. It's been awesome to follow along on the Discord. Makes me want to learn some of this stuff. Yeah, and I I think one of the big takeaways here is that uh, the bar the barrier of entry to contribute to a project like this is not as high as you might think. Uh, we, you know, Knight of Dragon has been there to to give like share his know-how with us but none of us really have a computer science background dan dan dabbled uh correct me if i'm wrong dan you said you you dabbled for a while but um i feel like mostly what what your work has entailed has been uh digging around in the hex data which we all kind of figured out how to do on the fly for this project um to varying degrees i feel like i have the least I have the least handle on on that, but like even even I figured out basically how to do it within like a few days. So like it can, I encourage people who are interested, uh, get on the Saturn Shiro Discord. Uh, there's a translation projects channel and uh, connect with people there. That's that's basically all we did, and now here we are. I hope Sega get to know about the awesome work you've done. Yeah, I mean, it would be cool. Or, like, I would love if the former developers uh, from Cap Cap Production, uh, who have gone on to become, uh, d work on the Mario Party series, I think they've, they, they're basically the ones who make the Mario Party games. Um, I would love to see what they think. Hopefully they wouldn't be mad at, mad at us for messing with their work. <laughs> Oh, you minored you minored in cons computer science for a year. That's right. Yeah, like I, d you definitely seem to have a l like more of an instinct for and for like figuring out how to dig around than I than I do. <laughs> I'm a very much a liberal arts major. <laughs> I abandoned numbers after like junior year of high school. Okay. So on this file, uh, I thought so. I have Cologne leveled up, and this is good because now we c we can see a lot more of her dialogue than we were able to show off on this the Shiro show yesterday. So um, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try and really uh, take a deep dive into her VO. This was she was voiced by uh, Saskia, who is who is a colleague of Momfus, who's one of the key members of our team. Uh, and it was, it, Momfus sat in and they had another one of the coworkers recording the session. They had a studio space at their workplace. Um, so it was, it was a really fun session. And then we did, uh, another second session a few days ago, um, just to Gee, you patch some of the things that, uh, weren't quite working. And, uh, it was so much fun. Just a very lighthearted couple of sessions. All right, uh, let's get the escort mission out of the way first. Okay, uh, here we can see that Danthrax has redone all of the text for the briefings so that it now has uh, proper capital and lowercase mix instead of all caps so it doesn't look like they're screaming at you anymore. Um, and this also allowed us to uh, fit more words in, which allowed us to adhere more closely to my original translated script. So it's actually a better translation now. Uh, so, victory. 
And I'll I'll try and uh <laughs> I'll try and drop by all the other navigators that are still on the field. I forget which ones they are, but let's take a look. I don't think I have medical yet, yeah. So that's Dark Misty, voicing Medical Flare. I'm not going to use her. Uh, new uh, changes here. Danthrax also updated the fonts here to support lowercase. And uh, uh, with the help of Knight of Dragon, just in the last 24 hours, figured out how to uh, move the, the location of the pauses at the end of sentences. We were racking our brains trying to figure out how to word these intros so that the pauses matched up. It was a, it was a giant headache, but uh, Knight of Dragon helped uh empower or enable uh danthrax to change the location of his pauses so now we can have our cake and eat it too quite excited about those pauses <laughs> i'm gonna talk less and let saskia take over All things considered, not the hardest escort mission. It's still got the tedium of an escort mission in that you have to, like, you, you can't just go at your own pace. You kind of can, though, because if you just go ahead and take out all the turrets, that's actually a pretty good strategy. But also, if you stick to the ship, then the turrets tend to target you more, so it's actually... Like, that's oh also a good strategy. Enemy contact. It's at four o'clock. It's straight ahead at twelve o'clock. Oh my god! Enemy contact. The pause hype. It's at ten o'clock. It just, like, the twin stick just feels so right. You know, it results in a far more modern control scheme than you usually get with a 3D Saturn game. It's straight ahead at 12 o'clock. Wunderbar. It's at 11 o'clock. We are nearing the target. It's at 2 o'clock. It's at 3 o'clock. Field recovered. Field recovered. It's a nasty cluster it's of turrets. Of 6 o'clock. It's at one o'clock. Field recovered. It's straight ahead at twelve o'clock. Not too bad. Does anyone know what it is? Oh my god, there is a gigantic. Does anyone know what a twin stick goes for nowadays? I got this one for 10 bucks and it came with four games. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It's at nine o'clock. It's straight ahead at 12 o'clock. Okay, so in past iterations, the twin stick had an issue where tilting the stick left, the r tilting the right stick left up or right uh, caused you to ping the navigator and when you ping the navigator during a boss fight it recenters the camera on the boss which is a cool feature but it was the input was wrong because what that meant is if you wanted to rotate your ship it would first recenter on the boss and then allow you to rotate because the controls it was a double input so it was fighting with itself um, but Knight of Dragon has since made that fix, and now it works perfectly. You can still ping the navigator and recenter the camera by using the left top button. So you still get that functionality, which is very... It's, it's actually pretty important for these boss fights. And I think, like, 
pretty cutting edge for 1997 to have that feature. 75 to 100. Paid 75 pounds earlier this year. Honestly, if you're like really into the Saturn, it might be just, I don't know. That's pretty justifiable still, I would say. There's like this, the twin stick games are really good. You've got, so it's um, Virtual On, which is a classic. I was playing it the other day, super fun. Uh, then you've got uh, Gun Griffin 2, which is a very good cockpit uh, like tank sim game. Uh, then you've got the Gundam Side Story Trilogy. Uh, the, the second and third games in the trilogy uh, support the twin stick, and those are really fast-paced, fun action games. It's almost like a fast-paced first-person bulk slash, except you can't fly, but you can jump for a long time. <laughs> see, 80 bucks to one third. Hey, uh, oh, never mind. Uh, I see <laughs> uh, 80 to 130 in a lot of eBay listings right now. Yeah, that's certainly a lot more than 10 bucks. Of course, you know, that was, that was 10 bucks on Yahoo Auctions in Japan. And then I had to eventually pay to ship it back to the States, which, I don't know, I, I, hold, I stuffed it in a box with a bunch of other stuff, but those boxes were like 80 bucks a pop to ship. Were the things you spotted in the process that meant you added quality of life, imp life improvements? Um... We tried to have a very light. Well, hold on, let me play this. That's uh, Edo Bean as Leone Rhodes. You can see with the new font. Okay, um, we tried to keep a very light hand when it came to changing the game. Um, I've said before, but uh, I consider this inherently an act of preservation, even though. When you translate something, you in, you inevitably lose some nuance. You lose something. That's all. Act, all translation is partially erasure, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but you try to have the the lightest or the smallest possible footprint. Um, there were a few things. Uh, there are English signs, particularly in this stage, that had English words on them, and Danthrax uh, f uh, fixed a few misspellings just to make it, you know, just to add that extra layer of polish. We figured we can do it, might as well. And I think that's still within the realm of a localization. Um, although I suppose you could argue that this is, well, no, I was going to say that it's set in Japan, so <laughs> a place where they often have misspelled English on signs, but obviously it's not Japan because it's another solar system. <laughs> Um, but uh, I don't know what else there even we would have wanted to change as far as quality of life. Um, I feel like quality of life is actually pretty good in this game. Once you know what you're in for, because it, it doesn't let you uh, suspend your like you can't save your state mid game. So if you turn off the game, like you, you have to start from the beginning again. But every time you beat the game, you unlock stuff. Like when you when you beat the game with a specific navigator in your like by your side, um, you unlock that navigator permanently and can use them on subsequent playthroughs. Uh, so that's by design, and that's the kind of thing we wouldn't like. I I would feel like that would be way overstepping our. Uh, Roll to to mess with, but also the game can be cleared in an hour or less. So, and you have infinite continues, which was not to be taken for granted at the time. Oops. One says "cream," so I switched it to "clean." Yeah, the "cream" sign. <laughs> this is kind of boring. I work as an interpreter, so I know how difficult it is to keep the meaning of the original. Oh, cool. What are you in? What language? The other was brown, browna, which I changed to brown. Uh, 
different hairstyle. Oh yeah, because Mumpus had a... Yeah, that's actually correcting the German. Next time, let's go out for dinner, yeah? Letting her idol VO play out here. <laughs> That's a uh, harahitana is Japanese for uh, I'm sure I'm hungry. And uh, I just wanted to do a little wink to the original. We had originally there were more uh, Japanese and Spanish lines, but. Um, after doing all the editing and test play testing, a lot of them just didn't work. They didn't feel real. Uh, and but there were a couple. You know, it was like they would make me cringe. And then, but then there were a couple that always made me smile. One of one of them was the Harahitana, uh, and then the other was uh, at the end of every stage. She goes maravilloso, and it just felt right. So I went with it. What's up, Rock and Chocobo? Nice controller, thanks. I this is uh, certainly my recommended way to play Bulk Slash now. Got Vince Clortho, welcome. It's behind us, six o'clock. It's straight ahead at twelve o'clock. It's at eight o'clock. It's at eight o'clock. It's at five o'clock. So we can get hit by that? Oh, no. I wanted to show you what, she, what it sounds like when she says energy wave. Right, my favorite thing to do on this boss is to get way up high and then and then dive down and fire everything I've got. And play chicken with it. A regulated British Sign Language English Interpreter. Oh wow, is is British Sign Language really different from American Sign Language? I've heard they're pretty different. If you know, I don't know how much American Sign Language you've seen. The stage. I took a year of sign American Sign Language in school, and she said the teacher said that it was most similar to Swedish Sign Language. I think Swedish. Just binging FF5 Pixel Remaster. So does that, is it pretty good? I've heard some mixed things about the Pixel Remaster, but I never know like how much of a grain of salt to take that stuff with. It's like some people are real picky. I don't know if I'm real picky. I was real picky with this project. But I feel like convenience is worth a lot. You know, the convenience of being able to play your favorite old game on a modern platform. It's behind us, six o'clock. Game Boy Mode re is reawakened this year. Still quite playable. Most changes I noticed are the character sprites. Enemy sprites are usually untouched, which is good since they be good sprites. Doesn't look like the ass iOS version. Well, you know, every step is a step up when you start with the iOS version. Whoa. Okay. It's at 11 o'clock. Do I have Lyra? I do have Lyra unlocked, so she's not going to be in the field. the bed here. Sorry. Never had so much trouble with one of these things. Got the live stream jitters.
at 11 o'clock. Wunderbar. Oh my god. Enemy contact. Shield recovered. Target destroyed. Target's left. Fine. Shield recovered. It's straight ahead at 12 o'clock. Wunderbar. Yeah, that's right. That's from uh, in the in the Japanese version. She goes, wonderful, beautiful. Oh, we got a sub. Thank you for the sub. Thrill House, what's up, Thrill House? Man, thank you once again. It's good to see you here. You're looking sharp in mine hair. Uh, where was I? Everyone agree that the game proves the Saturn was fine with 3D? Yeah, I mean, in the right hands. But it was rare for Saturn 3D to look this nice. I think they uh, really had a great idea of how to best utilize this hardware. I can't think of another game where these, the uh, digitized 3D model turned into sprites thing against actual 3D polygons has ever looked this good. You know what I mean? It's like the, 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 your avatar here is not a, a 3D model, it's, it's sprites. Except, it's I'll show you, let's see if I can show you this. When you kill a boss, if you're close enough to the boss, when the kill cam happens, you will see your ship rendered in 3D. It's the only time you see it. And I think that's such a cool little touch. They could have just made your sprite not, like they could have just made you invisible. And no one would have cared. But they added that extra detail. Oh my god! Enemy contact. It's at 10 o'clock. Oh my god! Enemy contact. One more shot. Let's do this. Oh, oh my god! Laser. Trying to get Straight close for the last shot. It's at 1 o'clock. Yeah. It's Wily Beast. Scheiße. There we go. Okay, look. You see me above it? It's the only time that you see yourself in 3D. Wish we got ports of the Saturn version of Mega Man 8. But I hear Saturn emulation is a bitch. Yeah, seems that way. What was different in the Saturn one? I know they had the bonus Mega Man 2 bosses. Was there other stuff? Because I don't really like Mega Man 8. <laughs> But I wish I did. So if it's good, maybe I'll look into that. Yeah, she says Shaisa when you get when you take a medium hit, and that's based on her saying shit in English in the Japanese version again. And she counts the targets in German too. It's drei. It's hard. <laughs> I can't pronounce it very well. Drei. And then, uh, what's it? Zwei and ein. You can see they were sort of going for like a take take out the Death Star type scene. It's behind us. They just couldn't really do something of that scale. It's at 10 uh, let's see, is Naira... I forget if I have Naira. It's at 8 o'clock. It's at 8 o'clock. Ouch! Energy shot. I always forget where she is. I think I already got her. 
Okay. It's at four o'clock. It's at one o'clock. It's straight ahead at twelve o'clock. It's at one o'clock. Interesting that the Japanese use that. Yeah, well, like I was saying before, um, this character it's was originally conceived as like the foreigner character, so she's half it's her lines are in bad English. Um, we are nearing the target. It's at one so we had to find a way to try and translate that idea. Maybe a little more sensitively. We didn't want her to speak bad German. <laughs> but what she does is she drops a couple weird English idioms. You might hear later she says, don't throw up the towel yet when you when you uh, continue. The it's target has been set. And she says, put your spine bone into it when you when you uh, when you're almost dead. Added Cutman and Woodman. Oh, so it's not just Mega Man 2. And there are many bosses. A huge simp for Mega Man in Final Fantasy. And Dragon Quest 2. It's at 11 o'clock. Does one basically speak like Terry Bog Terry Bogard? It's at 10 o'clock. One of the navigators? It's at 11 o'clock. How does Terry Gogard Bogard speak? I've only ever heard him say, Okay! It's at 9 o'clock. And power wave! <laughs> it's straight ahead at 12 o'clock. It's at 9 o'clock. It's straight this ahead. This ship is so cool. It's at 2 o'clock. Look at all its crazy attacks. Those beams. It's behind us. Six and as you break off more pieces of it, its attacks evolve. Look at those giant oh my God. torpedoes. It's straight ahead at 12 o'clock. Whoop! Scheiße! I love a boss that you break apart piece by piece. It's at nine o'clock. Scheiße. Enemy contact. It's at nine o'clock. It's straight ahead at twelve o'clock. Pull apart pesto loaf. It's at eight o'clock. It's at ten o'clock. It's at eight o'clock. This thing is definitely the pull apart pesto loaf of bosses. Here we go. Power wave sounds like come away. <laughs> I think the German character speaking English is a great idea. Well, thank you. Please select the stage. He's very obviously a Japanese man saying his best English. Well, that used to be like all VO for like characters that were supposed to be foreign. Like Street Fighters full of that stuff too. Um, because <laughs> they just got like guys from around the office back then. Um, but it's sort of a trope in games and anime for there to be like just the nebulously foreign per like even the Yakuza games still have that. Kind of offensive sometimes. Um, but it's a ten o'clock. It's a you know it's just a one of those tropes. Uh, and I don't know how they. I wonder how Yakuza deals with that in their localizations they just give him some other funny way of talking or what because when you so in the stage where you unlock cologne um you have the the briefing that you get at the start of the stage it says to look out for her and it says he says her navigation is kind of odd uh, so we had to figure out we had to make like that had to still make sense uh, but I think the idea that like she mixes like <laughs> she just like unapologetically mixes languages and expects you to understand I think that kind of works
I admit my space shooter experience is pretty limited, but this looks fun. Well, this is certainly easier than your like a sh like a full on like a auto scrolling shoot 'em up, which is what this team used to make. They used to make the Thunder Force games, which are like some of the most beloved games in that genre. But they're hard as balls, so this is a this is a certainly a much kinder and gentler take on in the shooting genre, and it's uh you know because. It's sort of a hybrid between that and like a dating sim. Uh, so I think that they wanted to create something where you were more likely to see the end so that you could unlock these navigators. It's still challenging and there is a hard mode. But, um, you know, like I put in perspective, <laughs> I don't think I've ever clear to shoot him up without continuing profusely, but I've now cleared this game probably 50 times this year <laughs> for testing and stuff. Uh, I often do have to continue like once, but uh, sometimes I don't. Uh, let's see, do we have Rupia? Show you Rupia if she's around. Rupia is voiced by my friend Diana. Uh, no, we already got her. Okay, well. Maybe later. It's at 11 o'clock. We are nearing the target. Ouch! Energy shot. Ouch! Energy shot. Field recovered. Rocket launcher. Yeah, <laughs> that one always gets me. Machine gun. I don't know why, but the gratuitous English makes me laugh. It's funny. It's definitely funny. Sucks for the Saturn that it came out in a time where Sega of America and Sega of Japan were essentially fighting each other. Did that stop? I feel like <laughs> maybe. Enemy contact. Is it? Are there are there game publishers? Are there international game publishers where that's not the case? Oh my God. I think it's just varying degrees of fighting. <laughs> Or, or varying degrees of power. Like, I think it's actually that Sega of America had more power back then. Probably because the Genesis was a huge hit outside Japan and was a dud in Japan. Although the Saturn was a much bigger hit in Japan. So that, yeah, like that's something that I think people don't realize is that the Saturn was a very different beast in Japan. It had a vastly larger library of games. Uh, like, I was not at all interested in the Saturn until I moved to Japan, and some friends told me, they're like, oh, no, you should get one. And then I discovered that it was just, like, this vast library teeming with interesting hidden it. gems, Us? many of which were, like, obtainable for less than ten bucks. Even like Panzer Dragoon Saga in Japan, I don't know what it goes for now. I got my copy for like five bucks. <laughs> and that was in like probably 2008. Wow, lucky shot. I mostly just use emulators for older games because I ain't paying no 100 plus for a game. Yeah, yeah. I think... 
general rule of thumb for me, unless I... Because I'm like a little bit of a collector. But general rule of thumb is, if a game is not obtainable for more than its original retail price, and the rights holders aren't doing anything to curate that game on modern platforms, then I think emulation is fair game. Because otherwise you're locking out everyone but the rich to play the game, and then the games are forgotten, which is bad. Uh... You know, and then and then I just would say, you know, if they do eventually re-release the game, then the good thing to do is to support that if possible. Um, Glay Lancer, the Japan-only Genesis or Mega Drive, I guess, uh, shoot 'em up, was the perfect example of that. I thought, you know, cause it, be it became one of these coveted shmups that's hundreds of dollars, and it is really good. Uh, but, the, you know, it was never the intention of the creators to charge that much. The creators aren't getting any of that money. Uh, so, I had no qualms emulating it, and then they released, they re-released it a couple weeks ago on Switch, and I think, I think, uh, like, PS4 and... I forget what else. It's on a bunch of stuff. Uh, and it was like six bucks, and uh, like I didn't bought it in a heartbeat, no hesitation. Even though I already had it on a flash card, because it's, you know, like it's cool that they took the time, and it's got some nice quality of life features. Um, so that's the way. If they re-release Bulk Slash, I'm gonna buy that, ish, on the spot. Trying not to swear. It's not working. <laughs> it's at one o'clock. Ouch. Promised my friend I'd keep this channel PG so he could have it on when his kids are in the room. Whoop. It's at eleven o'clock. We are nearing the target. Ouch. Energy shot. Oh my god. Enemy contact. God. Oops. It's at two o'clock. It's straight ahead at twelve o'clock. Yeah. And Ouch. Yeah, a lot of games that are overpriced are definitely not worth that. The most I ever spent on a Saturn game, any game, was 150. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Uh, partially it was just to treat myself, it was like after a, some big freelance project or something. It was, uh, it was Psychic Assassin Tarolmaru, which is notoriously low print run Saturn game toward the end of the Saturn's life. Um, and even back then, which was like 2010, that game tended to fetch like 250 plus dollars, and I found it for 150 in a big stack of them in uh, Akihabara. And Akihabara is not usually the best place to get retro game deals. I think there's a little bit of markup for being in Akihabara because demand is high there. Um, but yeah, there's like a whole stack of these coveted rare games um, for a low price. So I, I jumped on it. And that game, it's cool. It's kind of like... Alien Soldier, but it's not as good as Alien Soldier. It's slower. It's Alien Soldier. Whoop. But, you know, a game a game that's kind of like Alien Soldier, but not as good. Still well worth your time. I just, like nowadays, that game probably f goes for like 10 times what I paid, and I it's definitely not worth that. Just download it. <laughs> Wait, wait, so less than five pounds on Switch in English. Yeah, that's right. It's the first official translation too. I don't know if it's any if the translation is any good, but it, you know, it's, it's a simple. It's a s Actually, that that game has a pretty complicated story for a shmup of the era, but whatever. Right, what am I doing? It's not Dickens. This is definitely the Virgil fight of this game. Whoa. It's 
It's kind of funny that she says it's gigantic. Like, that's just a canned line they say for every boss, but this thing is, like, roughly the same size as you. <laughs> Yeah, Janol. Oh man, that came out yesterday. That oh, shit. One sec. How are we looking? Okay. There it is. Sorry. You know, we've got this. How long was that out, guys? Was it like a super long time? So, hey, Pudgy Bunny. Good to see you in here. Um. Oh, crap. It's out again, isn't it? I've got this very temperamental uh, upscaler. I just need to get the cord in the right spot. I think I got it. All right, nobody breathe. That was a few minutes, jeez. I think we're good. I was just starting to wonder if it's time to upgrade my setup and get one of those retro tanks or something. I'm intimidated by all that stuff, but it might be time. I guess stream enough of these things that it's probably worth it. Okay, it looks good. Thanks for uh, letting me know. I appreciate you guys letting me know. I'll try to keep an eye on it too. Okay. Last stage. One fact about the twin sticks is you, there is an adapter you can get that allows you to uh, plug it into a Dreamcast, and then, uh, and this was an official Sega product. And there's a Gundam side story game on the Dreamcast also, so you can use the same setup. I think also there's a Virtual On game on there too. Ooh. Dan's got you on the TV. Yeah, I'm so happy with Cologne's voice. You know, uh, I was saying yesterday, but like, uh, she was the nav I used the most in the Japanese game. And so it was really hard for me to adjust because I had such a strong, like, attachment to the original voice. But then something just clicked all of a sudden this past week where it felt right and I no longer felt that dissonance. Wunderbar. Wunderschön. 
まあまあまあこれは一番難しいボスなんだけど It's also one of the most interesting. It's the only boss that isn't just like a giant arena and you fly around it or walk around it. There we go. Oh! Last bit of health. That cost me a lot. Didn't know about the Dreamcast adapter. Yeah, I'm kind of keen. You know, I I got rid of my Dreamcast at the perfectly wrong time, like right before the mode came out, and they started porting all these arcade games to it, and now I feel like a fool. And then also, uh, the the market got way more expensive, so it's gonna be hard to reobtain one, I think. Oh yeah, oh man, that's how you should do it. This game's all about chaining. That's how you get a really high score. You gotta drop a bomb so that it hits as many things as possible. Chris. Don't get in my way. Please. Reason. Do you realize what you're about to do? Yes, of course I do. Chris, you know what we've been through. The persecution that's been wrought upon the people of Blau, including me. If we're ever to change this world, we need a leader with strong ideals and a chosen people to rule at his side. You're wrong, Reason. Creating a better society takes mutual respect and an ongoing drive toward a higher moral standard. If that had worked, we wouldn't be here right now. This is a holy war. It's going to change everything. A holy war? This? Taking millions of people hostage and using fear to get what you want? What you're doing is terrorism, plain and simple. Stop it! Why won't you understand? Why would you stand against me? Aren't you the Chris I grew up with? Sure am. And you're Rizen Lavia. Don't forget that. The same reason, Lavia, who loved sitting in the shade of that old oak tree and reading me poetry. The kind of person who would never do this. Yes. I am reason, Lavia. Acting commander of the Gardner Army's first special air squadron. Lieutenant reason, Lavia. Sworn enemy to your kind. Reason. Damn it, reason. That's uh, Luzine as Reason Lavia and Jonathan Boncher, also known as Two Across. You may remember him from my Kingdom Hearts streams as Chris Dooley. Taking a okay, good to see you, Chocobo. Thanks for popping in. Enjoy your pixel remasters. Whoop. Oh my god. I usually fly for this portion of the fight, but this is kind of working. Oh my god. Laser. One shot. All right, let's do it. Energy shot. Yeah. over. Stand aside now, Reason. I just... I just wanted to do something to ease all the suffering, all the frustration of the people of Blau. At this very moment, three billion lives hang in the balance. Whatever you're after, you won't achieve it by going down in history as an agent of genocide. Don't you think I realize that? I just... I couldn't... <laughs> Final password confirmed. 
And that's our happy ending. Almost. By the way, this is the only place in the game where you can hear the transformation sound effect without any background noise, and it's really cool. Listen to this. There's like some bass in there. I like it. No reason. Always with the poetry. Say, Chris, do you think maybe Reason was waiting for you to come for her? Yeah, I do think that. So that's, oh. With the threat of the Spatefest extinguished, the United Planetary Federation Army broke their silence and sprang to action, dispatching what remained of Gardner's forces. Alois Gardner was discovered following a suicide attempt in his private quarters, while Gahalt, his trusted confidant, was shot dead by a Federation special unit. Thus ended the ambitions of one Alois Gardner. That's a... Uh Pandemonium, who Saturn fans may recognize for his fantastic YouTube documentaries. Next time you pick on Margaret, there'll be trouble. I'm telling my dad on you. We're not gonna play with you anymore. That's Edo Bean as the second bully. The first bully is placeholder. We need to. If anyone picks on you, I'll always come to your rescue. These are the two big bottlenecks. We need the bully line and then this line that's coming up. In that case, I read you all the poetry you want. That's Mumphis filling in for young reason, Lavia. Uh, once we have that line and the bully line, we'll be able to f wrap up this FMV. And this is the last FMV we have to dub. All the other ones are done. Uh... Hopefully we'll see colognes in just a moment. He does have a lovely voice. Oh, Nick Pandemonium. Yeah, that's Pandemonium. Seemed like a no-brainer to have him do the narration. Would you be my partner for the rest of time? Oh, Chris, I'm so happy. Just a second. <laughs> oh, hey, it's from Miguel. What now? Ooh, Arnold. What? Wow, Conrad and Giuseppe. Oh, it was Giuseppe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, something just came up. What? Hey, hold on. But deep down, you're the only one for me. <laughs> Gets me every time. Her full speed sprint away from him. <laughs> uh, very good. I'm good friends with Jiggle85, and we'll be meeting up with him soon. Oh, cool. Jiggle. Oh, yeah. So shout out to the all the music you heard in both of those FMVs was redone from scratch by Jiggle85 and his brother, who was asked to be credited as such. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's I mean I think that's one of the most impressive feats of this whole thing yeah say hi for us uh, because we because we needed a way to separate the music from all this the by the way what was your name again from the, okay guys should I do a dirty should I do the dirty name or my regular name because you get a different reaction depending on But we had to separate the music from the sound effects in the VO 
And the only way to do that, because we couldn't find a rip of the music that we needed for the FMVs, we had to ask these guys to, uh, yeah, he just got cock blocked. <laughs> he just got marriage blocked. He was trying to propose. <laughs> so that's Cologne Steiner um, and I'm really really happy with how she turned out Should I do a bonus playthrough? Recap someone we've already shown. So on this file, I have Lyra, Naira, Rupia, and Cologne unlocked. You can also just fly with no one. Um, here, I'll give another look at Lyra. Maybe I can switch it up mid-mission. Yeah, here, I'll do stage two, and then I'll switch at each stage that I can. Just notice it changes your name from sex to- yeah, it changes it to socks. <laughs> Let's go for broke. Kinda to the right. <laughs> Trying to look cool. Man, why am I struggling with these things so much today? First day on the job. This is uh, Erin Leaf as Lyra Hart, and um, she just knocked it out of the park. See, usually the navigators call out what hit you. Like if it's an energy shot, they'll go, energy shot. But she doesn't know anything because <laughs> she's not part of this world. She's a pop singer. So she just says, what now? And then some of them she knows. Not the strongest navigator, but she is the funniest.
<laughs> I like that a lot. That's when an energy wave hits you. She doesn't know what that is. That's that then. So with Cologne in the game, we now have all navigators implemented in the game. We still have to show Kina, but she's been in there for a while. Kina is the secret navigator you get after you've unlocked all the other ones. Which means you have to beat the game six times. But that's like six hours of gameplay, so... <laughs> Not as bad as it sounds. All right, let's switch. How do you do? I am Medical Flag. Might I trouble you to tag along? Yes. Let us be off. Onwards. 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 Very Oxford English. Yeah, she's a princess, we just figured. This is Dark Misty, who has an ASMR channel on YouTube, Dark Misty ASMR. It's Misty spelled with a Y, uh, M-Y-S-T-Y. She was the first navigator we recorded. She helped us figure out the whole thing, the whole process for doing these. We made it as painless as possible. She had never heard of napalm, which I think is a great, that's, I think that's great. <laughs> uh, she asked her family, because I, I had it in my head for some reason that in the UK, people pronounce it napalm. But she asked her family and they said napalm, so we went with that. Remember her on the Shiro show? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was probably back in like June. Go. Onwards. Help 
Follow the same as U.S. on it. You follow the U.S.'s lead. <laughs> oh. Finally, select the stage, if you please. All right, let's take a look at Leone next. This is Edo Bean, who uh, some people know from the Games Done Quick community. She MCs some of those playthroughs. I don't know if she actually does speedrun. I think doesn't she also do speedruns herself? I see her. She streams on Twitch. Look, look her up. Edo Bean's right here on Twitch. Uh, I always see her doing like uh, interesting puzzle game challenges. You know, like she'll like play a puzzle game with one hand. Son of a How would you describe this accent? Uh, generic American accent. I believe she's from California. But I don't think it really sounds particularly Californian. See, Leone is the she's the first navigator you get, and she's the only one that who has a, whose location is obvious. It's right when you start the first level, so she's supposed to be the one that like teaches you how the navigators work. And so, um, your chances, players' chances of playing the game with uh, Leone are much higher than with the other navigators. So they, they made her like, she's like sort of the vanilla one. She's like uh, the gold standard. So we didn't want her to have a particularly prominent accent we wanted she's supposed to sound like this is the by the book uh, and so y you can hear she's, she's a little more formal she sounds like what you'd expect a like a radio oper operator to say she doesn't uh, add her own little touches very much there's like a little bit of, she has a little bit of a shy energy and that comes through like when she's like oh wow when you blow up everything um, but mostly she tries to keep professional. Straight ahead. Nearing target. Straight ahead. Oh, wow. Straight ahead. Ah. Straight ahead. And I just think we, we could not have cast the role better. This I just feels perfect for the role. Um kind of forget. I feel like this was one of the characters we were uh, particularly picky about because it had to feel I mean because it's the like arguably the most important navigator in the game for the reasons that I said. So uh it took a while I think to make that decision, but oh man. I'm so glad we did. <laughs> My Ghostbusters gun, known as the Bezier Blaster. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Does it have a middle class thing like the UK? The regional accents in the US, not class based ones for the most part. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, there's like the idea of like the hick accent, which I guess is is basically code for low class. Um, I don't know if there's really a high class American accent though. Oh, there used to be the transatlantic thing, like how Hollywood actors spoke until maybe the 70s. Uh, but uh, I don't think anyone actually talks like that. Could get you. Can you actually shoot down these bombers? Oh yeah, oh, that's cool. Man, many dead. <laughs> definitely went right into that skyscraper. Still, it's, it's so cool to me how much stuff is going on on screen at any given time in this game. It's very impressive. Especially consider the, considering how little slowdown there is in the game. It's very rare. What's up, Rowan Dink? Yeah, doing well. Good to see you here. We are we are approaching the end of this project. To the rear. Um, just showcasing what I already showcased. Colon Steiner, who's our newest navigator, and the last one we had left to implement. So now I'm just doing a bonus, where I'm showing off different navigators as we go. Many regional accents in the UK, however, a lot of middle class English sound like Oxford English no matter where they live. <laughs> Interesting. Please select the stage. My mom lives in St. Louis for, for the last 16 years. Oh, wow. I went there once um, for a work trip. Seems nice. Does she like it there? I guess if she's been there 16 years, she must at least kind of like it. Launching operation. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Nearing target. To the right. Straight ahead. Target set. Remaining three targets. To the right. To the right. Fire blaster! Oh, wow! <laughs> to the rear! Straight ahead! Straight ahead! Straight ahead! on a marching band trip. Oh, you can go up in the arch? I didn't realize it was a, uh, like, enterable structure. That's cool. The elevator you take up and down is cramp is a cramped service elevator. Oh, she remarried, so she doesn't have much choice. I'm sure if she hated it enough, a discussion would be on the table, I hope. Oh. By the way, I've said this before, but those bombs are that are labeled bomb. Um, it was originally spelled B O M, and Danthrax fixed the misspelling. To the right. 
this stage is all about fancy flying and not shooting the bombs that are floating around everywhere. You also edited bomb armor up there, that's right. What did it say before? Oh, it was bomb armor before and you changed it to bomb shield or something? I forgot what it... <laughs> Oh, it used to say bomb shield. That's right. To the left. Whoop. Ahead. Soft underbelly of the ship. To the left. Let's go there. To the left. To the right. To the right. Straight ahead. Yeah. Well, there's no other navigators to unlock on this playthrough, so I guess I'm just gonna stick with Leone. Uh, but that will help me. That will allow me to unlock her, and eventually that will make it easier to unlock uh, Kina. I needed room to add the B and bomb, so I had to change shield to armor. It makes more sense anyway, they never had a shield effect when they got hit. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could imagine, you could... Please select the stage. I guess they figured the metal outer casing of the bomb is the shield. <laughs> but armor works just as well, if not better. <clears throat> Buildings are VDP one. Yeah, I don't know about that stuff. Dan, you seem to have a handle on that. To the left. Fire blaster. Seem like putty in your hands in this game. It's, I mean, it's really comfortable. I want to show everyone the Gundam Side Story games because they actually have a lot of remarkable similarities to Bulk Slash uh, in how they control. You have that same thing with the beam sword when you get up close. And I think that it probably has a pretty similar appeal. Except it doesn't have the... Uh, you know, the dating sim elements.
No dating sim, no translate. Oop. Well, you sort of get to date the bad guy from Gundam by hurting him. Oop. I don't. I actually don't know. I think maybe people get turned off when they hear Gundam. I don't care about Gundam at all. I have no interest in Gundam. But, ooh, but it's a really fun 3D Saturn game, and there are not that many of those. And it's also a really fun twin stick game, and there's even fewer of those. I guess the tricky thing would be that that used really high profile voice actors from the, the animated series. Wow. That was amazing. And we'd just be using volunteers again if we were to do. Straight ahead. A lo I guess the other thing is you might be able to su just subtitle things. I forget if there's VO during the game. I think there might be. I would say if it's just subtitleable, that might be the best option. Ow. Yeah, I don't, you know, all I know about Gundam is from Gundam Wing because it was on cable when I was a teenager and when it was I remember they hyped it up a lot on Toonami before it came out and it was it looked like this badass action-packed mecha anime and it was like I didn't I had like heard of the mecha thing but never really seen any and I was like excited to finally like learn what all the hubbub was about hold on I'm gonna take a bathroom break but then I, th I thought the show was kind of boring. <laughs> this is kind of boring. Uh, we'll be right back. Hello. I have returned. Didn't have access to cable until I went to college. We just had over-the-air TV when I was growing up. Then while I was at college, my parents ended up getting Dish Network. They were waiting for me to leave. Well, they were just so much less entertained with you gone, I think. It's probably what it was. Oh man, it's a really nice sunset out there, there right now. Oop. Is that VDP one or two? To the left. Did we do it? What the? 
that moment is a little weird and it has nothing to do with our translation it's that they react to the boss transforming like several seconds before you see it happen like there's a weird delay like it should be that you the what the happens while you're watching the cutscene of them transforming but that's the game they made so But yeah, Gundam Wing, it was like kind of boring. <laughs> the action scenes were cool sometimes. But I'm wondering if there are other Gundams that are better. Please select the stage. <laughs> we can change that too. See, that's the kind of thing though where I feel like we'd be overstepping. Yeah, it was like 50 episodes. It was long. I like a short, concise story. Like, in general, I can't do shows. I find it exhausting. Although I was obsessed with Cowboy Bebop when I was a teenager. And it holds up. I really like it. I'm, I'm This new one, I think, is going to be ridiculous but uh you know whatever it's fun it looks like people spent a lot of money to cosplay an entire tv show <laughs> uh, but you know that's that's a novelty <laughs> Thing's got a lot of bells and whistles. Enemy contact. Straight ahead. Energy shot. Target destroyed. Remaining two targets. Shield recovered. Okay, here we go. Big blast. the bigger chain opportunities in the game. Oh, you were kidding about the night thing. <laughs> Straight ahead. 
I mean, you keep adding features, so I don't, I don't know. Like, you, I, I can't believe how much you've accomplished just in the last week alone. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Question is there a big Saturn community in Japan? Here in the West, we don't seem to know anything that's going on over there. Is it the same for them? Yeah, I, would, I, th I think stuff like the Junkyard and Shiro are probably not particularly well known in Japan. I, I don't know if there are like a lot of online hubs for that stuff for the Japanese community, but certainly there are. Uh, a lot of, you know, veteran gamers with a fondness for the Saturn. Um, you know, I see on Twitter people that, like, frequently tweet their setups or, like, you know, just like, hey, it's the anniversary of whatever Saturn game. There was one just yesterday that was, like, a game I happened to be playing. What was that? Uh, oh, uh, Soul Hackers. Soul Hackers just turned, I don't know, 25 or something. I you. Yeah, the Mega Drive was was a was a bomb in uh, in Japan. PC Engine was much more popular. But the Saturn did well, I think. Please select the stage. And yeah, huge in the arcades too. Do, yeah, I think probably like the Saturn nerds in Japan know that it was a flop here. Okay, off we go. Ah! Energy shot. Yeah, maybe Line is the place to be. You don't know Line? It's an app. I've never used Line for like online communities. Uh, it's, I use it to communicate for work. Just like texting, basically. To be honest, I'm not impressed with Japanese websites and apps. Bye. Bye. Never heard of that one. Can't think of a lot of Japanese apps or websites that I go to, other than Surugaya, which is. Well, it's actually the international outlet of their main Japanese site. It's not particularly pretty, I guess. One of her idling lines is she just like sighs sheepishly. Oh, God. The waste it was not amazing. It was
Trying to be very methodical about this boss now. There we go. Good one. Okay, but now I'm in trouble. Because when he's when you break off both of his sides, he starts launching these satellite dro drones, and they can be a real pain. There we go. Oh, that was flawless. Sometimes this boss can make or break the stage. You can go from high health to low health, and then you're screwed for the final boss. It can be kind of hard to evade consistently. Okay, what did we learn last time? There's Got a, is there a sweet spot that can get all of them? That would be cool. Probably not though, huh? But you can at least get two at a time, we learned. You go like... Yeah. It's an easy 3k. Oh, that's how you access Yahoo Auctions. So it's like a, a proxy buyer, and then you pay a fee on top of the auction price. I've been thinking about looking into those because Yahoo Auctions often has like way better prices. Chris, this twin stick was a Yahoo Auctions buy back in uh, uh, 2007 or 8. Let's say 8. Alright, let's see if I have any luck on the ground again. Last time it went well. I'm scared though. This thing's pretty scary. <laughs> Laser. God. Certainly not having as much luck. Although, some. Alright, we're fine. We'll be alright. Got him. What an impractical design. Especially the two heads. What are those for? It's over. Stand aside. Oh, Bowtie, you tried out the Burning Rangers demo? My, I have to confess, I haven't actually tried it out yet, but I've been following the guy on Twitter for like a year or two. And I just retweet every single thing he ever tweets <laughs> because it's always like an awesome clip of the game. It looks really slick. Uh, oh, it, is a, it is a proxy service. I would love to know what kind of rates they charge. Like, is it pretty, pretty decent? Okay, here we go. Hey, shut up. This isn't like you, Chris. You know, when when does the password confirmed voice come in? It's right when you kill Reason? I never hear it. That's Cargo Dan. With the threat of the Spate Fest. I wanted to stage, call her out. The United Planetary Federation Army broke their silence and sprang to action, dispatching what remained of Gardner's forces. Alois Gardner was discovered following a suicide attempt in his private quarters. While Gahalt, his trusted confidant, was shot dead by a Federation special unit. Thus ended the ambitions of one Alois Gardner. Oh, 
Bai Yi is a good service, but they're sneaky, expensive charges. Like having the item wrapped securely. Oh god. I'm telling my dad on you. We're not gonna play with you anymore. Can you kill reason? I didn't hear it this time for some reason. Oh, that's weird. I wonder if I skipped it somehow. <laughs> well, let's see if we got Leone's ending. That'd be a nice treat. What regional accent does Nick have? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't detect any particular, like, characteristics that flag it as a specific region. And today, the love that bloomed on that battlefield will join these two in holy matrimony. Here come the lovebirds right now! Just look at them smiling from ear to ear. Here they come! <laughs> she tripped! The bride has tripped! You alright, Leone? <laughs> Was that the old... Oh, wait. That's not the new edit, is it? We updated Chris's line. To make it fit the lip flap better. It's possible I forgot to do something that I needed to do. To inject it into this build. Tell me your name. Alright. Uh, let's just give her my normal name. She's too pure. Aww. Oh, okay. It hasn't been all put together yet. All right. As long as I didn't mess up. Well, let it be known that the Chris line will be updated to better match the lip flap. And that's Bulk Slash. You know, once again, um, we're very close to the end. Um, we're going to be showing off Kina. I'm guessing... I don't think we set a date yet, but Thanksgiving is probably out. Uh, but in the next few weeks, anyway. And then we should probably be done with the whole thing in the next few weeks. And then you can all play it. Buy your twin sticks now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would hope it'd be out by Christmas. Um, although it's nice to not be pressured to do so because we're not selling this <laughs> um, I'm just thinking about the old days I used to work at a game company and holidays were December's were always the worst it's the hardest time of the year but anyway um oh man you can blow up those schooners 10 out of 10 I guess I'm going to call it here. Uh, anyone who watches my channel during the week may have noticed that I didn't show up Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, uh, I, I ended up talking to a friend who just needed someone to talk to, I think. And uh, Thursday, I was we were I was going to co-op with uh, Lucky like I normally do, but we were trying to get we we're trying to wrap our brains around this. RTS game and we wanted to figure it out on like off stream 
and it ended up taking all night, <laughs> and so we just didn't. But I think I needed the break anyway. I'll be back on Monday, though, with something else in the cyberpunk category, because this is cyberpunk month here on Lacquerware. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out and watching more Bulk Slash English. Uh, if you liked it, please tell a friend. You can follow the hashtag Bulk Slash English on Twitter for the latest updates. Um, uh, you can also follow Dan, who's Danbo underscore four. That's D-A-N-B-O underscore four. Also on Twitter, he, he posts bi-weekly updates, update threads on our progress. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there probably won't be that many more of these because pretty soon the update is going to be that the game or the patch is available. So please be excited. All right. Goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.